Welcome to the No More Late Fees podcast. I'm Jackie. And I'm Danielle, and we're just two best friends and ex-Blockbuster employees rewatching some of the best and worst movies from the late 90s and early 2000s. This week, we are talking about the 2003 comedy, What a Girl Wants, with our wonderful guest, Olivia. Welcome, Olivia. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. (laughs) We're so glad that you're here. (laughs) But before we dive in, let's get into some housekeeping. If you love the podcast and want to support us, here are a few ways that you can. Have you subscribed to our YouTube channel? Have you? Because I don't think so. (laughs) Please subscribe. Please subscribe. (laughs) You can watch our episodes along with bonus clips on our channel, and it really helps us out. I'm not saying I'm begging. Okay. But I am. (laughs) And we do, if you haven't noticed, we do tend to go off on tangents. And so those tangents have become deep dives, which you can (laughs) find exclusively on our YouTube channel. (laughs) Right. Right now, you can see one of our deep dives about JC from NSYNC and how he deserves to have some respect put on his name. Go look at it. Go check it out. (laughs) And while you're flipping tabs, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash no more late fees and become a bestie. So you get some more exclusive content, some behind the scenes stuff that didn't even make YouTube. No. Sometimes we have weird opinions on things that don't make the cut in the episode, but definitely over on Patreon. So head over there and sign (laughs) up. Yeah. Some of them are a little too R-rated, too fresh for YouTube. So (laughs) you definitely might want to sign up for that. But let's dive into a little bit about our the movie we're going to be covering. What a girl wants. I know Jackie's super excited about this movie. Oh, I hope we don't have another parent trap on our hands. (laughs) On a whim, American teenager Daphne boards a plane to England to find a father she never met. Upon arriving there, though, she makes a startling discovery. The man she's looking for is a lord, Lord Henry Dashwood, a member of the British upper class who is running for political office. Lord Henry didn't know Daphne existed, but he welcomes her into his life. However... She isn't so sure, and his, and his family and his current betrothed look on her disapprovingly. The movie stars Amanda Bynes, Colin Firth, Kelly Preston, RIP, Eileen Atkins, Anna Chancellor, and Jonathan Price. The movie was directed by Denny Gordon, and it's based on the play The Reluctant Debutante by William Douglas Holm, and was written by Jenny Bix and Elizabeth Chandler. You can watch the movie for rent on Apple, YouTube, and Prime. I'm very freaking mad that this was not free. And so when I saw that it was not free, I said, that's all right, bitch. Mama got it. (laughs) Hold it closer to you so I can get the screen cap. There you go. Mama got it. (laughs) And you know what else mama got? Mama went on Amazon and said, I need to watch my DVDs. So I bought this machine here right (laughs) i bought the machine and i said i will watch my dvds on my computer and guess what happened the computer said nah (laughs) it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen it's not happening i was real upset because (laughs) if you don't know if you've never seen it on dvd it has a commentary by the beautiful Amanda Bynes. She talks throughout the whole movie. Don't talk a thing about the movie mostly, but it's still entertaining. <laughs> and I recall this because I been had this DVD and I couldn't I couldn't listen to it. I was upset. Danielle. What? What did I tell you? Well, I told I you know. go to Goodwill and buy a DVD player for ten dollars. How much okay. you spend on that computer one? So okay, so okay. <laughs> Here's the thing: I do have a DVD player. <laughs> I just had. I have two. I just haven't decided to connect it, and it's, it felt like a lot. So you know what felt easier? Are you well, returning that? 
I'm gonna make it work. I think something is <laughs> something is wrong. But anywho, if you have the DVD, it is worth worth it to listen to Amanda Bynes give her commentary. Okay. You make me want to get the DVD. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> she goes in. I love it. And yeah. you know, I miss my girl. Anywho, yeah, I just I'll... had to <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I was going through it anywho but before we get started let's get into our reading rating rewind so you know the drill before we get into the movie we'll reveal the rating or y2k versions of ourselves we give then at the end we'll see if our current selves agree with our initial rating our scale consists of would buy it would buy it again the best would plan repeat five day rental would watch again Two-day rental. Eh, okay. Nothing to write home about. And same-day rental. Garbage! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Olivia, we'll start with you. What was your Y2K rating? What were you like? Five when this came out? 2003? No, you were older than that. No, maybe not. <laughs> I can't do math. I think I would do... Like two day rental, maybe. Yeah, I would do like two day rental. Olivia, I thought you were gonna be back up for me on this episode, but I see I'm right. I was like, maybe, maybe. I, I mean, I. No, no, no. You don't have to, change. Have to change. It's I fine. I'm just. I, <laughs> I'm gonna stand ten toes down, and say surprise. <laughs> I bought it. <laughs> It was a wood buy, a wood buy for me. Yeah. <laughs> Jackie? I will preface it by I love I I love Kelly Preston. Love Amanda Bynes, love Colin Firth. Mm -hmm. Uh this movie just did not do it for me. Okay. So it'll be a two day rental for me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> It doesn't sound fine. <laughs> Artistry, <laughs> it's a spectrum. No worries. None at all. I mean, I think back then, I actually, I did watch this movie frequently because I think it was because like, I, I didn't really, I was like, kind of like, I like lived by Carrie Street through her because I really didn't have a dad growing up either. So I was like, I want that, like the, the like father-daughter dances. So I think Back then, I would have bought this. And like any time I was like, I want a dad, I would watch it just to feel something. <laughs> but I think now my yeah has changed. I'm not going to say my daddy issues did not feed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the time that they had, like he like rode in the motor motorcycle and like they had a little day together. I was like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> it could never be me, but yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm not going to say that that didn't feed into this yeah, for me. I, you know, 100%. I, I changed my answer. I think I would have bought it, but yeah, I think my, my, I'm biased today because <laughs> I did not influence her answer change. Now I just had to think about it, you know? <laughs> really big. What did it change to? <laughs> She said she would buy it. The would buy? Okay. I would buy it. <laughs> okay. Today? No. But yeah. <laughs> understandable. Understandable. Well, the movie budget for this was $25 million. And it made $50.7 million. In its opening weekend, it grossed about $11.4 million. And it came in at number two behind Phone Booth. Who remembers that? I do. That one. <laughs> That's what I was watching instead of this movie. Whatever. <laughs> I will say that the reviews were not pretty. Edward Guthman of the San Francisco Chronicle called it a dreadful teen comedy. <laughs> That's Damn. a good way to describe it. <laughs> you know what, Edward? That's fine. <laughs> I mean, uh, I got that. <laughs> Anya Kamenet. Uh, comment, I, I'm sorry, doesn't matter. She'll never know. <laughs> of the Village Voice described the film as a sanitized adventure for the Mary Kate and Ashley set. Hey, 
<laughs> that was a, I'm a target. I love me some Mary Kate Ashley. Whatever, Anya. Yeah. I don't know about sanitized though. I just uh, yeah. whatever. Yeah. They did say <laughs> poo in this movie. They did. They did say poo <laughs> in. <laughs> In Amanda Bynes' commentary, she does say that she's surprised that I believe her stepsister says, like, somebody should have put a cork in it 17 years ago. She mm-hmm. said she was very surprised that that line actually made it in the movie because it was so, so taboo. Risky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anywho, eh, I, hey, I think I was on a high. You already know I love Bridget Jones' diary. Oh. Colin Firth. Right. Yeah. And so he's playing daddy? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> I was, was about it. I didn't want him to be my literal daddy, but you know what I wanted him to do, you know. <laughs> so Alexis Bledel and Jessica Simpson wanted the lead role that ultimately went to Amanda Bynes. I could have. Jessica Simpson, no, sorry. Alex, first of all, I think Jessica Simpson. I, I don't think I would have believed that she was seventeen. I think she would have looked older. Yeah. And Alexis Bledel is like she's uh, blah. Think cardboard box. I'm sorry, like <laughs> ain't giving me nothing. Yeah. Except doleful eyes. What'd you say, Olivia? <laughs> what movie is she in? Who is she? Gilmore Girls. Rory. No. <laughs> no. I love Gilmore Girls, but no. <laughs> <laughs> that was so bland. Oh, could yeah. not, could never. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, I, yeah, couldn't see it. But they pretty much built this movie around Amanda Bynes. They were actually really surprised that she didn't go harder in the slapstick. They thought she would be a little bit more over the top. But they realized that she actually was trying to calm that down a little bit like she wasn't giving the chaotic mess that she was like in she's a man but that worked like yeah. you know yeah. i think i feel like this is way more slapsticky than she's the man where she jackie it, when yeah. she like trips over the dude and like flips up really quick and then like grabs the knife with the apple like that whole scene and then doing the weird dance because he's doing the weird dance because there's ice in it. Like, but that has, that's not even comparable to she's, she's the man. The man. <laughs> she uh, was all over the place. She talked about cheese for like <laughs> no, that's just minutes. awkward teen. <laughs> but it was very like she did a, a lot. A lot. I think a, a lot more. It had a different energy about it. I think. If we look at her mindset at the time, though, it probably explains the behavior of acting in this movie, which was that she looked at this movie as a way to try to kind of be more mature and shake mm-hmm. off her Nickelodeon, you know, past. The show. Right. So I think she was really trying to move past that. So I think this is like a good medium in between this and it's like she had to do this movie in order to be able to get to a point to be and she's the man you know what I mean and it proved that she had box office day because she had so much more say on that set by the time that movie came around she got to help pick Channing which was cool Mm -hmm. all right well let's get into it okay (laughs) My first note is, oh no, this CGI (laughs) at the beginning. It looks like what they would render before they would skin Pixar movies. Like it was just the bones. Now this movie was all like, (laughs) it was filmed in a lot of different places. I think 11 locations, but they did not film in New York at all. They filmed all the New York scenes in 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 uk in the uk and or on like a set which as a new yorker you could look out at the outside and know that is not new york so when she was outside of chinatown like her like apartment in chinatown i was like where i was like girl what (laughs) 
<laughs> we we meet Libby. Uh, Amanda Bynes' character's name is Daphne. We meet her mom, Lily, who is a free spirit. Libby. Libby. Is that not what I said? You said Lily. Oh, uh, Libby, who is a free spirit. A spirit. She is a wedding singer. Question right. mark. <laughs> Yes. And has gotten her daughter a job with the catering company. I, in this movie, it seems like wedding singers and catering are a package deal ah. because they're always at the same weddings. Yeah. And uh, Libby tells Daphne the story of how she met her dad. She was in Morocco. She rolled all the way down like a thousand foot sand dune into his arms she fell forever. <laughs> I am booking my ticket to Morocco <laughs> immediately. To find your calling for And I'm just, they're going to be like, there's this crazy black girl rolling around the sand and we don't know Help what me. she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> so then we see like they immediately have a connection. He's very into music. She's very into music. They get married in like a traditional ceremony and then plan to make it official once they get back to England. They get back to England and unfortunately Henry's family is none too pleased with this situation. She is not polished. She is not refined in any way. And so one of the Henry's advisors comes up with this plan to tell her that Henry does not want to see her anymore and put like shoves her in the back of a car. And then he gives Henry a note from Libby (laughs) in quotes saying that she's leaving and going back to the U S unbeknownst to Henry. She is pregnant with Daphne. So Daphne has spent her whole life hearing about this dad and how wonderful her parents connection was And so she really feels like a piece of her is missing and she gets very sad at all of the father daughter dances at the weddings that she caters. We need to talk about this because in the same way that now as an adult going back to the parent trap and being like, what the fuckery is this? I have to say the same for this scenario because there ain't no way. Yes, he sent me this letter or whatever. I'm getting that child support. Okay. <laughs> there's no way that I am not I like there's no way he's a lord. Le- I, I saw the house. <laughs> there's no way. I'm not taking the struggle bus because he don't want to be with me. And I just don't think like I know there was miscommunication, but I would have been calling the answer machine every day. Henry is me again. And I need that formula money. What's going on? What's good? You know, like there's just, it just, it did not add up. She's talking about she'd been waiting for 17 years. And then on top of that, why would you do that to your daughter? Mm -hmm. Like, it's like if, yes, Henry sent you this letter but he didn't know you were pregnant so like give him a chance to be in your daughter's life regardless if you and him are not together Mm -hmm. like I just thought that was some weird selfish shit and really messed up and then the audacity she tells Daphne oh you don't need to learn about yourself by meeting this father as if he's some deadbeat he's only a deadbeat because he doesn't know like it would be different if he like got up and left both of them but he doesn't know but in her mind he did leave her and she was left her not the child he did not know she was pregnant he did not know even in the letter she he did not know so yes he left you i think i think I think perhaps Alistair, because Alistair knew that she was pregnant and I think perhaps he used that. Like he found out you were pregnant and wants nothing to do with you. Yeah. Is the only way I could, because Libby seems like a really good mom. That's the only way in my mind I could foresee her not even trying to attempt to make contact with Henry as much as she loved him. I think, I think Alistair would have had to say something like he knows you're pregnant no, because be in the phone call, 
he said to her like why didn't you tell me I had a daughter or like I had a kid yeah but I think Alistair used it against her but like really Henry knew nothing about it Okay. yeah he really didn't know but like I get what you're saying that yeah. in her mind she was just like he okay fine he doesn't want to have anything to do with both of us I'm going about my business I'm just saying I don't give a fuck you might not want to see this kid but you sure as hell gonna pay for it especially yeah. and we married <laughs> what? I, I just is the math's not mathing for me with this one. I I can't. Her boho chic nonsense wasn't working on me. She would have caught these hands as my mother. Like, there's no way. I go and I, I go see this man and he's living like that. And I, we've been struggling. No. no. She had that bus, though. That was a pretty nice yeah, bus. The struggle bus is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so... Daphne decides she's just gonna go to London. Somehow she has a passport. Also, how'd she get the money for that? For like- right. I guess her catering gigs. I don't know. And I would like to say, for any time anyone goes to England in like the early aughts, <laughs> Virgin Atlantic was getting that product placement money. Yeah. Because it's the same in the wedding date, which we're doing in a couple of weeks. Like she full on works for Virgin Atlantic in that. I was like, there's that Virgin Atlantic <laughs> popping up again. That Richard Branson knew what he was doing. <laughs> I will, you know what? That that is very true. I never thought about it. It isn't literally <laughs> every movie. Every movie. If they go to the British Isles somewhere, Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> I want to just talk about this scarf. The infamous like infinity I don't even know what it is like baby girl it's like this thin we know it's not covering none of your neck it's not providing any warmth I don't know why we had like these random scarves with anything Mm. like even in in the warm weather we fast forward and she buys a hip scarf like a full length hip scarf to go over her jeans but I feel like it's like coming to like back in trend right it now. It is. And it's, we don't know why. Put it back. It's it giving me legit anxiety. <laughs> Every time I see something, yeah. this girl, I don't know, she went viral. She was, she had those like. The big those, belts. Yes. And she was like, oh, I just, like, I just discovered it. Stop. Gen Z, please. I, I'm starting to think y'all are doing this shit on purpose. <laughs> Stop triggering our trauma. We're <laughs> old now. You can't be doing this to us. And stop Christopher Columbusing everything. We have Google. I know you know you didn't just straight up discover this belt. <laughs> that was mad funny. <laughs> <laughs> like my mom used to wear those belts. Uh, I can't. So Daphne gets to England. She's, I guess, booked a room at this hotel that's supposed to be, in her mind, really fancy, but is just a hostel. (laughs) It it seems very Club 7 to me. Yeah, like it could have been the beginning of a music video, like Britney Spears walks in and everyone's (laughs) hanging out and then all of a sudden we're all dancing together. Right. Well, it's actually the front it of this hostel or whatever is the same location from Bridget Jones's diary, which I love. Really? Yeah. Oh, a so lot. Colin of, Firth is familiar. <laughs> there's a lot of like Bridget Jones diary little things that I noticed in this movie, but the director said that a lot of the places that they shot on location had never been shot on location before and after their movie like now everyone goes to these places like the crown uses one of the houses that they used as like buckingham palace which is really cool yeah so we might hate what a girl wants but it started it all just saying (laughs) okay Oh, I'm just reading in the notes, the chop off the ice swan's beak and put it down the dude's back moment was improvised by Amanda the day of the shoot. Yeah. Oh. She kept giving us moments. Yeah. 
have given us no man. Give us something. We we don't deserve you, Amanda. I I will say like I what I like about you fantastic tv show if you have not watched it i don't know where you can stream it go back and watch it jenny garth and amanda Bynes together are just i think it's on hbo max now i love it did you watch um, that show olivia no you should watch it it's fun <laughs> <to> watch it. <laughs> it is um, actually really good yeah uh, amanda Bynes is great it, just her comedic timing even from an early age fantastic so i wish her all the best because she she truly truly is talented and so there's a kid sitting on the checking counter of the hostel and it's was his name oliver is that is that his name in real life is oliver Oliver. yeah james he was in raise your voice as the same character (laughs) yeah like he just went from Hillary Duff to Amanda Bynes. It's fine. well, he did this one first, and then raise oh, your okay. voice after. So we did it in the reverse order. So Daphne is immediately smitten, and this kid is like, he just got jobs because he mans <laughs> the front desk at the hostel, but is also what a, like a, a a singer at events, but also parks cars. He, so he just to- shows up. He's got to do what he got to, what he's got to, he's got to do what he's got to do. But my question is when one of those, that weird kid, I can't remember what Alistair or whatever, Alistair. calls him a mixed breed at one point. Oh, he, just, calls him, he calls him a mongrel. Yeah. Very racist behavior. Yes. Yeah. And then it wasn't I, Alistair. It was Armistead. Armistead. Thank you. <laughs> and I was just like. I should have been like, what the hell? But that I was more like, well, what's it, what's he mixed with? <laughs> I could say he's mixed with. Should I know have been I... indignant instead. You're like, oh what, what? tell me about your <laughs> your heritage. <laughs> Wait, but did anyone catch when he was singing? It was like at that the twins' birthday party. Mm-hmm. And like he was singing and she's like, Oh, like let's liven up this like dance floor. And all of a sudden he turned into like this like black singer. And did you hear like I was like, what what is what is happening right now? Like, why did his voice like, I was like <laughs> Okay, so I have a theory and I, it might not be my original own theory, I guess, but I really believe British white singers have so much more soul than white singers here in America. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's just that they respect black music a little bit more or they're just yeah. they try so hard to emulate it. But like like in Amy Winehouse. There we go. There That's we go. much yeah. better. <laughs> I feel like Adele does that too. Yeah. 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 It's just it's super weird. And it's also very weird that they when they sing they have no accent anymore. <laughs> Yeah, like Harry but, Yeah. They but, probably uh, say the same about us, though. So. Well, a linguist said there was a reason why that happens when they sing. They don't have an accent, but it's still weird. Yeah, Just yeah. saying. I agree. I agree with that statement. <laughs> so he's singing on on the count. Did you freeze, Jackie? No. Oh. I, I'm just huh. shocked. Amanda Bynes was only in six movies. Yeah, actually. She was in this movie, the one with Fred Frankie Muniz. She was in She's the Man, Sydney White, Easy A. What's the sixth one? Hairspray. And Hairspray. Yeah. Uh, she wasn't Hairspray. Yeah. I'm just surprised. Like, for as well known as she is, and I guess, I mean, we all grew up, or a lot of us grew up with Nickelodeon. So. <laughs> I guess she's just ingrained. I mean, she only did a few. Hmm? The Amanda Bynes show. Yes. And she was on all that. There's going to be an all that reunion and she's actually going to be on it. And this will be the first appearance that she's making since her conservatory was ended. So yeah, that's going to be really cool. Hopefully that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be excited to see what happens there watch what happened live so we while we're in the hostel 
we see on TV that Henry is actually giving up his lordship to run for election as a commoner because he feels like he can make more of a difference if he runs than just like sitting in the House of Lords. Yeah, I don't know anything about British law. It always just seems very complicated to me and interesting that they like to wear wigs still. (laughs) Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I would be cool with the wigs if maybe they wore something like more fun. I don't know. You want like purple? Yeah. Can <laughs> can we put some butterfly clips in them, bad boys? You know? I like how like they mix it up in like Bridgerton with the queen. Yes. Yeah. I can't wait for that new show to, to come out. I'm going to be oh, on it. Yeah, she's um, so we also see that henry now has a fiance gwyneth and a daughter those two both always play bitches every movie tv show i've ever seen them in it's rare i ever see them be nice people and the whole time oh god do you think that they're just like yeah this is what i want to do i just want to (laughs) be Or like, how do you think that they like come about that? Or like, I always wanted to know because like, yeah, I feel like they do. I think they like do it once. They do such a good job. And then people like when they're thinking of buying casting, they're like, oh, I'm looking for a so-and-so type. And then they're like, oh, we should just get so-and-so. And then they're like, okay. And then they get typecast, (laughs) you know? Yeah. I don't know how I'd feel by that. I'd be like, damn, okay. <laughs> like, <let> me- <laughs> well, <laughs> they personality. <laughs> I mean, I I think it's more fun to play a bitch than the nice girl. So, and they say you have to be actually a nice person to play a bitch, but really? probably people who play a bitch made that up so that they <laughs> <laughs> they're hiding behind the rumor. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. This is not me. <laughs> I would probably just play into it and say, yes, this is me. I'm just <laughs> playing myself. Don't cross me in these streets. <laughs> right? <laughs> you thought this was a game. <laughs> the the soon-to-be stepdaughter's name is Clarissa. Mm-hmm. Uh, name. Uh, yeah. And they are, Glynis is Alistair's daughter. Alistair, as I had mentioned before, he was the one that kind of shooed Libby away and is like uh, his campaign manager like he runs everything about their entire family like he did it for his dad and now he does it for him and they're social climbers essentially you know I think they probably have maybe their own money but they don't have the titles essentially Mm -hmm. and so I'm sure he just got rid of Libby and really wanted to push his daughter because he's been wanting to get a certain place kind of like they even talk about like oh there's probably paparazzi outside like we should go change or like there was some throwaway line like that like they want the attention right yeah. kind of like Kate Middleton's family yeah they were commoners then they got um, a bunch of they were new money and then they they pushed their way to the top they did <laughs> so so after that, like, after seeing that, she's like, that's my dad. And what Oliver, she's telling Ian, Ian sorry, Ian and her automatically just connected. They're like BFFs, yeah. boyfriend, girlfriend immediately. He's like showing her around and she's, he's kind of telling her not to doubt herself and that like she should go meet her dad or whatever. Like he's very supportive. He's a very good boyfriend. I would have to say there was just never a concept back then. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> and they they go. Is this where they go? And like he buys her bracelets. Yeah, they go to that like street fair, and he's like with her as she's trying on all this stuff. There's a and, lot like, of montages and a lot of like trying clothes on in this movie 
and it, I mean, but that was so like the time period though. Like, oh yeah, all those movies had at least a makeover scene or a clothes montage changing situation. But she had like three. <laughs> she had two. Leave the girl alone. Well, not, she yeah. didn't have like a real montage when she went to try and stuff with him. Like she put on that the uh, hip scarf. I don't know. Was this that or scene what, that did that happen then when they it like, may have been another day. Yeah. It's all it's all yeah. mushing up together. It was like I think the hip scarf was when he like met her at the like her dad's house. Yes, you're and right. And so, she got on his motorcycle. Uh, That's yeah. right. Yeah, and then like- so uh, she then goes to Dashwood Manor. The the Bobby man that mans the gate was like, "What do you need?" And it seemed like he was gonna let her in, and she was like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm gonna break in instead." I didn't understand that thought. Post. I didn't either. It was just an excuse for her to make a very awkward entrance for no reason, acting a damn fool. That's why I think Americans are crazy. <laughs> I think that's another reason why I now that you mentioned the awkwardness I think that's another reason this movie turns me off is like she's consciously making choices that make it awkward it's not just because she's like an awkward person that these things happen it's it doesn't feel authentically awkward if that makes sense <laughs> I think what the whole point is to, I think they make these decisions because the whole point of that guy saying like Libby should go away is they really want to show the very differences between classes Mm -hmm. and show like why she does not belong because she does these very outlandish outlandish, yeah things. So that's a good point. Yeah. I, I I think that's why, and I think I that's just, what they were going for with her. At, in yeah, this I just think they could have done a better, like Pretty Woman, where she just didn't know, you right. know, like I don't yeah. know how to be in high society. Rather yeah. than I'm just gonna do these really weird things. Yeah, and I think with a different actress, they might have toned that down. Yeah. But I I think it's because it's Amanda Bynes, and that's that is her. Sh- her shtick right like is a lot of physical comedy and being goofy so it makes yeah. yeah yeah so then she she gets over that wall and of course clarissa clarissa is the only one who sees her running across the windows and whatnot and That's then a giant bird yeah <laughs> And they finally, you know, and while this is happening, you know, the whole family's having like a conversation about his political career, Henry's political career and whatnot. And then they think it's paparazzi and Henry goes out himself to go catch the person, which I think is kind of weird considering they have a guard and they could have called to get somebody, but he brings her inside the house and he's like, you know, give me your picture or just take your picture and go. And that's when he finds out that actually this is Daphne and it's her, his daughter. And she has a picture of him and it's all clicking. Like what the freak is going on? She shows him his birth, her birth certificate. At first he's like, hell no, what the hell's going on? But then as his, his fiance and Clarissa's nosy ass come out and his mom it starts to hit him. This is a possibility. And somehow, some way, instead of kicking her out, they she ends up being able to stay with them. And it's mainly because they're afraid the press is going to eat this up if they send her to a hotel. And it's his mom who actually, I think on purpose, just facilitates that, oh, she should stay with us, which really yeah. pisses off Clarissa and whatever that lady step. Glennis. Glennis. Mom, like the grandma knew that like he had a daughter i think if she had known she would have gotten her granddaughter she clearly doesn't like those women (laughs) that he's with so and And i think she just she she immediately feels a kinship with with daphne and is being grandmotherly but still keeping her like staunch old british woman keeping up (laughs) a 
with appearances type thing. <laughs> but I do love the line where like because Daphne's like an American, so she goes to hug her and she's like, No, no, no. British people only show affection to dogs and horses. I'm like, <laughs> that's huh. accurate. Makes that's sense. pretty accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I would my aunt is British and like when I always when I hug her, it's different than like my other grandma's sisters. She is she's love she's like a loving person, but she's more like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's more there, of like there. a tap, tap, tap. tap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So they're kind of talking through like there's a royal dress show on Friday that they want Daphne to attend. And they're they're announcing that he has this daughter, but they're trying to figure out how to spin it and kind of give the press what they want without any scandal attached to it. Yeah. yeah. So they just say like, he's known about her this her whole life and she, he just hasn't had the time, whatever lie. But this is where I would like to say, I don't know if you guys have seen Crazy Rich Asians, mm-hmm. but- this is the same kind of thing where you're not setting someone up for success, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. you know what the society is like, you know what you're bringing this person in to. So I don't know why he didn't sit down with her or even the grandmother and yeah. say like, this is what happens. Yeah. And no one does that. And then they're like, oh, she's so crazy. But they don't where's grandma clarice teaching you how to like sit and stand and where's paolo with the makeover like where are we? <laughs> really like <laughs> no seriously they don't set her up for success and he has to know that clarissa and glennis are like the devil and devil yeah. spawn that they were never going to be good Fine and nice her. right yeah. no that's much it even and, the grandma has to know that right and yeah. like no nobody went to check and see if her outfit or she had clothes to wear for this or why didn't we take her shopping because like clearly she's not gonna have clothes to go to this thing yeah and I feel like she should have still asked her grandma like is this okay to wear you know or just like asked for advice like in general yeah right and not Clarissa because Clarissa pulls her in and she's like has these two outfits laid out and they they're very plaid and very <laughs> loud colors <laughs> and she's like which of these two and Daphne says is like oh I thought like the royal dress show would be more like muted than than this but okay but she kind of has in her mind what she can wear which I feel like is a moot point because then she has that weird bathroom scene where she sprays the perfume on herself and then doesn't like it. And it felt like she was already dressed. She was just finishing up in her robe. And then she got all wet. So then she had to like pivot and she shows up in a beret and jeans. Yeah. Maybe that was her only skirt. It doesn't look like she had a like luggage. She literally yeah. had a backpack. Yeah, yeah that's true. So. Good options. <laughs> And the, this royal dress show s- situation, like the frumpiest, it it just like <laughs> it was it was not it was get- giving J C Penney's catalog. <laughs> <laughs> it was giving the mall. You know when the when you would go to the mall and there'd be a random fashion show mm-hmm. for back yeah. to school or something. That's yeah. what this was giving. Yeah. Yeah, but I do like this scene is iconic of her walking down the catwalk, and I want it. Was it Layla Ford? What's what's Willa her name? Ford. Willa Ford. I want to be, be bad. bad. <laughs> like uh, iconic. But the scene where she's like tossing back her jacket, mm-hmm. they had to keep filming that scene because the girl who was behind her was trying to not get hit, and she's like, "Girl, you're supposed to get hit." <laughs> stop moving <laughs> that's so funny and so they had to keep it she was ducking and diving and amanda was like i need you to come closer i learned this again commentary <laughs> now you might be saying danielle did you remember all this i did not but a wonderful i gotta shout out this girl on the decider website 
She actually, her name is Samantha Nungesser. She actually wrote like all the facts that you would want to know about. Oh, wait, no, that's not her name. Let me get this right. Sorry. <laughs> not that it that not that it matters. Maybe I don't know who she is. Never mind. Oh, oh, okay. Claire Spellberg. Thank you. Claire actually went through and wrote all the things that came from the DVD commentary. Oh, so nice. your girl oh. was not in a pickle anymore when the DVD stopped working. That's a real one. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we see, of course, she ends up falling off the stage into the lap of Prince Charles. Can we talk about these fake impersonators? Like they didn't even I try. I wasn't mad at the Prince or Prince Charles. Like he looked ish, like from right. the side, okay. Prince William, was that? No. <laughs> that was just a random boy. <laughs> <laughs> and the red Yeah, the redhead, I didn't see him. The the guy who played Harry not didn't even know. Mm-mm. Oh. It they was were like you that, two will do. <laughs> yeah. But see back then I was like, damn, did they really get that? Like, <laughs> let me see, like like they really said yes to this movie. Like that's a big deal. Like back then, I was eating that up. I was like, "Holy shit!" And that's when Prince William had all his hair. Oh God, he yeah, was yeah. yeah, it's Why true. Are going for his hair because it's true, it's Jackie. So sad. It is. It's, it's devastating. Like that. Like if you look at pictures, look. I know we all get older, balder, fatter, whatever. It, it's a thing. We age. Yeah. But, it's just so depressing it's so depressing because if you look at pictures when this movie came out of william cats me okay <laughs> and it's, it's not like he doesn't have the resources like the right. so much money he could have gotten like a hair transplant he could have gotten like red light treatment like there there's things that he could have done to prevent oh. that like so all many things like buddy come on man <laughs> it's like did you not try yeah hey sam do you love rom-coms absolutely not they're the worst what just kidding oh. they're my favorite thing in the whole world <laughs> yeah i love them too but uh, my love life has a uh, not turned out the way the movies say that it will. <laughs> Just, I guess put it that way. Well, which do you think came first? The rom-com or our weird ways of thinking about love and romance? Well, that's a real chicken or egg scenario, and it seems like something maybe someone should talk about. Uh, maybe us? Maybe in podcast form? Oh my god, you're so right. Each week on The Rom Complex, we pick a topic, and then we chat about the romance movies that have affected our lives. For better or for worse mostly for worse. It's The Rom Complex with Shelby Sweeterman and Sam Frontera. Coming soon. Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> I'm doing it in whale. Smooth. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. The love language of the Whales? water. Whales? Yeah, the love language. <laughs> whale. The love language of the water. Anyway. <laughs> So then we see, we meet Princess Charlotte and her really tiny, angry dog who hates everyone, but I almost called her Violet from, she's all that, Daphne. No, um, she's the man. Or Viola. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just messed all of that up. But <laughs> yes, Daphne is immediate, like the dog immediately loves her and stuff. And like, apparently Charlotte, Princess Charlotte is very hard to win over. So Harry's like, oh, I kind of see like, maybe we got something here at least we won someone over yeah um, she asked him he she asked henry if she's gonna if his daughter's gonna stay for the summer she says yes throws his his future wife and a uh, daughter in a tizzy they're pretty pissed mm -hmm. about this and so now she's going to be a part of like the outings and whatnot yes. so that's gonna be interesting and and throughout this whole process of her being at the dads or whatever her boot Ian is trying to like find like call her and connect with her and like her stepsister is giving her the giving him the run around like he hasn't been able to connect with her so that is also happening at the same time yeah also did people not like have cell phones back then barely like 
Because I was like, why doesn't he just like text her? I mean, like call her on her cell. I mean, we see Henry has one. I mean, people had them, but I, I don't know if maybe it was expensive. You so know, my whole thing is like, if my mom found out that I just like ran away to London or like just to be like see my dad for the first time, like she would be like calling me 24 <laughs> seven. Like, I would also be calling her to check in. Like she never called her mother. Like I'm just, I'm curious in that whole situation as well. Like, and her yeah. mom's just kind of like, oh, she went to meet her dad. Like that was like, <laughs> the <extent of> it. <laughs> I, well, I think I'm she, follow you. <laughs> I think she knew this t- day was coming. It's not like she mm-hmm. was like 14. She was 17 about probably going to be 18 and Henry does call her and say, like, what the fuck? Now, I if I were Henry, I'd be even more livid than he was at Libby. Like, he was just like, all right, that's all right, girl. Like, it was super weird. Was. Uh- <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, damn, that's crazy. You didn't ask for child support. I mean, that, I, I wouldn't be that mad either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no back pay, nothing? Okay. All right. I got- I got college though. How about that? I'll take that. Don't worry about it. Don't even. It's the least I can do, you know? Uh, I got a good to Oxford. Right. What happens next, Jackie, after the show? There's a couple of late night kitchen Cocoa Pop snack sessions. Apparently, they both enjoy Cocoa Pops. Is it Pops or Puffs? It, they said Pops. Oh, you know what? Probably not trying to give brand placement. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe Only that's Virgin, what, Virgin huh? Atlantic. <laughs> maybe that's what it's called in, in England. I don't know. But she had the same box when she went back to the US. Girl, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He does ask if her mom ever married. She says no. Can we be more upset that Henry doesn't seem very interested in actually getting to know his daughter and that when he does ask questions, it's about her mom? Yeah. Side eye. Yeah. 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 Got my eye on you, Harry. (laughs) Got that that one good eye. Uh, There there is... (laughs) there's an upcoming ball on saturday henry is like i'll send you shopping blah 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 and glennis is like oh no i got a dress i already put it in her room the amount of like olive green fabric that is on this dress (laughs) she's such a bitch i mean come on And, and this is what like if somebody is truly threatened like she didn't have to do anything. This girl oh, no, just exists. Right. Yeah. You're and you're this threatened. But I do like the conversation because you know, she puts on this horrible dress and her grandma and her have a conversation. Her grandma is just like telling her what's up. Like she is threatened by you. She's yeah. gonna get this title, and you could potentially stand in the way of that. And mm-hmm. just who you are, just being your unique, authentic self is a threat a threat to yeah. them so just be yourself and and do fine but I'm no fashionista but I don't believe that a pair of big ass scissors is going to turn that frock into that stunner well I just think she just took the the sheer off I think she just yeah. cut them off and then created did, like you know some slit stuff here okay yeah, it was the slip underneath because she, when she's looking at it, she lifts up the first layer and uh-huh. there's that like blue shimmering out from underneath. And so I think, yeah, and then she just cut that roughly thing down to make it like a, a yeah, coat jacket. Doll. Yeah. Then I think she messed up with the slits because there was like two awkward legs, yeah. like yeah. in the middle. So I think it had to be a little quirky, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it'd be all like, and I was like, <laughs> Why? Like, what is that placement? Like, <laughs> it's not even like a leg slip. It's like a coochie, like yeah. Like, like, and then I was like, "There's two. Like, I was like, "Was this like what? What? What was it? What was your thought process?" Like, like, <laughs> well, she in again in the commentary, Amanda Bynes said she hated this dress because it was extremely tight. 
yeah, looked- so she wasn't wasn't feeling She's so it. So thin was really thin there. Yeah. yeah, you could tell by her her jeans, and you see yeah. that that hip bone pop out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. those like- were the days. Yeah, we're not glorifying. I mean, I'm so, you're right. You're now. right. You're right. I we're glorifying being I- healthy. <laughs> you're right. My bad. <laughs> Sorry. I don't even know what my hip bone look like no more. <laughs> I think that's what was happening. I've never seen her in my life. That's <laughs> Bitch, I miss you. I just want I you to know. I was like, I didn't even know we had a divorce. Like, <laughs> do I have to go to England to find you too? An archaeologist no. can't even find that shit no more. Uh, <laughs> screw it, dad. I'm trying to find my hip, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's my waistline? Yeah. <laughs> you left too. Damn. Sorry. I didn't mean to slip back in the 2000s and glorify anorexia. We're not my going bad. back. Uh, we are not uh, going back. <laughs> <laughs> Clarissa also comes up to her and says, I have two pointers for you. Pointer number one, go home. <laughs> Bitch, like, this is my like, daddy. Really this is my ate, house. Huh? You really thought you were <laughs> Uh, I was like, yeah. How many times ta- I just in the mirror? <laughs> <laughs> and then she tells him to stay, tells her to stay away from Armistad, who is the most smarmy dude. And I love, I do really appreciate that not even for a second does Daphne even pay him any attention. No, I do love her saying, Your couture on vintage. Is that what she says? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. I do like that. And it's true. Like, bitch, I don't want your dusty ass man. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, she should have learned like what her being, I guess a duchess, right? Because if her, I'm not Duke sure. Duchess, yeah. 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 Because her dad's a lord. I'd have been like, bitch, you ain't even got no title. Don't even <laughs> talk to me. You know, because she doesn't. Her yeah. mom. Free I motors. see what you're playing at here. I know why you're with my daddy. Exactly. Like, also, like, how does the dad not know? <sighs> I know, think he's just kind of like... I'm just going to go with the flow. Yeah. You know what? Men do this. <laughs> let, me, let me correct this. White men especially. And I learned this in the work environment because I had I've had multiple bosses where... I try to tell them of a real issue that's happening with people being Karens. And instead, men might look at it as women being women. And it's like, I don't want to get involved with that instead of looking at it as a real issue. Also, I think he's just like trying to find his footing because he still doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And he doesn't know how to be a father. He doesn't want to push too much and be overbearing like I, I he doesn't know what to do doesn't excuse the fact that he doesn't do shit but I get that he's probably you know he's British he's a man and he's dumb so that's also that's I feel like it makes kind of like it makes sense because like even the grandma is really cold yeah I don't think he's really had like love and affection besides yeah. besides his dear Her Libby mom. yeah <laughs> So, like, he just doesn't know how to act. Like, it, it was hard for him to even look through the scrapbook of, like, the photos of, like, her growing up. I feel like affection, like, hasn't really been there in his life, so. Yeah. You're, you're probably right. So, obviously, they get to the ball. The grandma is with, with Daphne. And wh- while they're going down the stairs, they have to say, like, their title and who they are. Daphne doesn't know. She gives her freaking address to yeah. Chinatown. <laughs> but, <laughs> but then she does that you know amazing unveil unveiling of her new couture dress oh, oh did me <laughs> yes that's all that's, that's cool crazy. <laughs> and she has her stepsister and future stepmother in a tizzy they are pissed they are so mad they are big mad as she comes in and the press is eating her up so much so that her father does have to actually like come and escape escort her away so and then she's she's partying like a rock star until Amistad makes her dance with him oh gross and he's trying to touch her butt which again in the commentary Amanda was like 
Ugh, he's touching my butt. Like, <laughs> nasty. She did not like it. She was just grimy. He was. And then as they're dancing, she sees Ian, her boo thing. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and Love I'm that sure. for you. <laughs> and I'm just like, how did this bitch literally put one foot onto this country land and got her, secured the the boyfriend situation? Literally. Yeah. Uh, so she's trying to get away from Amistad and armistead i don't know i keep on thinking of the boat now it, it's not good. armistead like from fred armistead armistead right i'm yeah. gonna call him armistead because he's just like that boat leading our people to the wrong direction <laughs> true. colonizer <laughs> the og colonizer OG. Uh, <laughs> so she sees ian she gets away from them. And I she meets the twins because her dad tells her, like, who's coming out party this is or debutante. It's I love Peach and Pear. Peach and Pear. <laughs> Apparently, all their siblings have fruit names. Fruit Except for, yeah, Parsnip. They have a brother <laughs> named Parsnip. Why? Like, why? Is maybe, mom, you know, they, they, she just likes fruits and veggies. Maybe. Gwyneth when Paltrow. was Apple born? I was thinking the same thing. Gwen and Paltrow saw what a girl wants and said, ooh, peach and pear. We have on this trend. <laughs> I'm going to do I Apple. I was thinking maybe they were making fun of her. No, she was born after. No, 2004. This, this movie Makes sense. was ahead of its time. <laughs> Gwen and Paltrow 100% watched what a girl wants, saw the twins, peach and pear, and said, <gasps> <laughs> Ugh. And that's how it happened, everybody. Say Apple again. It missed. It didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so Daphne feels bad for Peach and Pear because, first of all, these Princess Diana knockoff wedding dresses that they have to wear from the 80s, atrocious. And they look like they're not having fun. So she goes to her boy Ian and said, let's turn it up to 11 and let's get this party started. And they 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 had a, I think I can dance choreograph number situation going on. That was so cringy. I'm not <laughs> going to lie. When I was rewatching, I was like, why did I think this was cool? <laughs> I was not like, yes, I'm so jealous. Yeah, what the hell was that? It's bad. <laughs> It's real bad. It's so bad. And then they went. They they did like the wide shot, like the overhead. And I was like, it's so awkward. <laughs> what is this? Also, that not a bad. single black person. That whole situation. I was like, <laughs> yeah. Where's the flavor. Where's the diversity? <sighs> it, 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 Ian. Ian. <laughs> yeah. Ian's the diversity. And we got one. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what it is. But he's something. He's something. He's diverse, is what he is, Danielle. <laughs> we got a quota, people. We're good. That's a wrap <laughs> on the diversity <laughs> hires. <laughs> so uh, they dance so hard that the chandelier falls because the father's like obsessed with this chandelier or something. And it, it like, came from Napoleon and he tells everyone about it. <laughs> Amanda said in her commentary that she was really sad because the crashing of this scene was shot like post-production or something. They did it not while they were there, so she didn't get to see it. Yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. So then her and her boy Ian get reacquainted, which is nice. And she's kind of like saying her what her experience has been and whatnot. And... I think that happened before, like, the chandelier. Once the chandelier mm-hmm. fell, it was a wrap for the party. <laughs> Again, the press was eating her up, and the next morning, there she feels really bad. Glynis is losing her shit about what an embarrassment she is and how his poll numbers... I don't know if his poll numbers were down yet, but, like, they were just talking about it. And he was like, it was not no big deal or whatever. And yeah. now he's eating on the Cocoa Puffs, or mm-hmm. pops and uh, looking Glynis like, right in the eyeball and she's like what the fuck is this and he's <laughs> like 
It's shit I like. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get the the uh, what'd you say? <laughs> I was gonna say then it was cute that they were like bonding at the table. Yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, the they were thing. they were finally starting to bond about something other than Libby. And then Glynis came in immediately and like interrupted that shit. She she wants to keep him at arm's length from Daphne as much as possible. Which is really fucked up because like it's not even like the mom is there. It's just his daughter. I hate mm-hmm. a woman who like will try to get in between a child and her father. Yeah. It, it's just like ridiculous. And I feel like she should have pretended to be nice instead of mm-hmm. this, whatever she was doing. And parts of, you could see parts of Henry come out that probably Libby was attracted to. Like he talks about James Brown and all this other stuff. And the toast scene where like they both yeah. were, they spread the butter and the jam all at the same time. And yeah. apparently they had to do that a lot. And they practiced in front of a mirror together to to kind of get the timing, which was super cute. Uh, but then then he's told that he has to go and get to parliament or whatever so he's about to leave but then he sees ian is in the the like waiting room or whatever and that's when daphne's like running to go change because she finds out that they're that he's here and then they both leave on his motorbike which henry does not go to work he goes to call libby yeah oh yeah and she's like oh you used to drive one of those. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, is it a drummer? And which is funny because the guy who plays Ian is actually a drummer in real life. So cute little callback there. So um, they go, they just, the, the this festival. is when we get the hip scarf. Yeah, yeah. They just go. And this is when he buys her the bracelets too. I was and a little the, mad that she's wearing a bindi, which like, yeah cultural appropriation if you don't know what that is it's like the little Uh, like jewelry accent or Mm -hmm. mark that's put on your forehead in the indian culture and it's a religious thing it it shows it's usually supposed to signify that you're married i do i'm glad that she eventually does take it off and it's not in the scene afterwards but (sighs) cringe yeah and she does say to ian in the scene like i have to be better have to be more polished blah 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 which doesn't really fit in in the scene ken pointed out later on when she decides to actually be like very refined he's like it feels like that conversation should have happened after that catalyst like it seemed like those scenes were out of order and is this when they're on the boat yeah and and he tells her why are you trying so hard to fit in when you were born (laughs) to stand out (laughs) When I was younger, at that eight, I was like, ah, I can't. I'm like, I'm so different. Like, I'm like, I want somebody to tell me that too. <laughs> so quirky. You know? Candy dropper status, Ian. Yes. Candy dropper status. Uh, <laughs> looking back, that position that they were in, and like, if you like see her laying, like she's not laying on the, on the wood. Like she's like like propping herself up and I'm like how are you okay like <laughs> yeah your abs just like in lock right now like it looks so uncomfortable when they so this scene when they fall out of the boat that's another scene that reminds me of Bridget Jones's diary out yes. of the canoe yeah and when they had to fall they weren't allowed they had to use stunt doubles to do that insurance wouldn't let the two of them actually do that scene and the kissing scene they actually, they didn't have a lot of time so they literally like had five minutes to just like randomly kiss each other and this was um oliver Ian, james's oliver first. james yeah go ahead sorry oh uh, this was oliver james's first on-screen kiss yeah so they and nothing like rushing a scene <laughs> i mean they killed it because that i was yeah. like, oof when he <laughs> grabbed her face i was like <laughs> <laughs> I was like where's my man we're doing this <laughs> so the next scene is another event it seems like it's like a rowing event I think yeah is but they rowing? also had like it looked like price tags on their clothing it was really weird oh yeah it was I think it was just like their no I don't know what the numbers were for yeah but at first I was like peach and pear I know y'all just got rocking new dresses but why y'all got the price tag <laughs> but then I said 
to myself self logical thinking here that's probably not a price tag yeah so peach and pear show up they are like fashion forward they, they immediately terrible. lock eyes with these twin guys and they're like mm. and then clarissa is just sitting there being resting bitch face because she ain't got a man she's chasing after armistead who's like or armistead or whatever <laughs> yeah. Who, who's chasing after Daphne. He corners Daphne on the dock and is like being really aggressive. And Daphne is like, I'm trying really hard not to like be an embarrassment, but this is too much. And so he leans in for a kiss and she pushes him in the water, which then the press starts to have a field day about. And so uh, Henry grabs her, runs up to another one of Ian's random jobs as a, a parking <laughs> attendant. And he's like, I need your motorcycle keys because it's parked mm -hmm. right there. And so Harry, Henry and Daphne take off on the motorcycle, lose the paparazzi and spend a wonderful day via montage mm -hmm. at like a little street fair. They go back to the, yeah, they're at the same place that her and Ian were at. Mm -hmm. I do want to go the peach and pear scene. I don't know what it is about the noises those two make along with the twin boyfriends that they picked up. <laughs> those noises are like one of those random weird things like you know how people have lines from a movie that they'll say or or whatever but like those noises I I remember like making those noises as like <laughs> a quirky thing that I remember like I just liked <laughs> the weird noises the two the the four of them made I don't know why I don't know why they made those noises and didn't have real lines yeah, yeah. but I liked it the Screen Maybe Actors the Guild, if you didn't have a certain amount of wines and they didn't have to pay you. Oh, well, it was ASMR from my heart. I don't know <laughs> what it is. I don't, I just liked it. So I just want to throw my stuff <laughs> So yes, they go, they do a shopping thing and, and this sparks up like Henry's good old days. Mm -hmm. And he pulls a Ross and, and tries on some leather pants. Yeah, and is like dancing I do also want to say that you can't tell me you can't tell me that this movie was not like a precursor to him being Harry Headbanger <gasps> or whatever in Mama Mia, Mama Mia. Yeah. you can't tell me also like if Colin Firth didn't do this movie I don't think he would have done like a Mama Mia Actually, when they were trying to convince him to be in this movie, they always had him in mind because they love Mr. Darcy of him playing that role. And so they tried to like convince him. She had the, I think it was the director or the producer had to fly to England and sit down and have lunch with him to kind of convince him. And yeah. he just like always saw himself as a drama actor. He didn't see himself doing this kind of stuff, but he's glad that he, you know, after the movie was over, he was glad that he did it. And I think it did open the doors for him to do yeah. like stuff like be silly, like Mamma Mia. But they did ask Hugh Grant to be in it. Yeah. And Hugh Grant's like, are you crazy? I'm not old enough to have a teenage daughter. <laughs> Lies. Okay. Okay, delusion. But he was lying to himself and no one else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I think Colin Firth is a way better, like yeah. uptight dad or whatever. I so... Agree. <laughs> but after this this is when they start to see like his numbers like fall and on like 16 points or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's like losing his election and he realizes that he has to like change things and he he essentially goes to Daphne shows her their history and then tells her I need you to change yourself which sucks yeah. you know you know, you don't want to meet your dad all this time. And then he wants you to be something different. And she really does try. And as there's like a montage of them going to different things, you could see that he's kind of sad because that spark about her is gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is all leading up to pretty much her debutante. And in this course of her trying to be like better, she doesn't see Ian at all. Mm -hmm. and, and Ian kind of like calls her out on that. And so when she has her debutante, by this time, she's like a different person, even like in the dress that she chooses does not feel like Daphne. It feels yeah. like a pod person. I don't know. I thought the dress was nice, though. 
Well, and Amanda Bynes got to create it with a designer and she was super happy with the outcome. The hair. The hair the felt hair. very serious. Heavy. Like yeah. it 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 felt like this role she was trying to play. Yeah. yeah. I did like the little pins in the back, you know. Yeah. That, that was cute. cute. Oh, yeah. I like that little flare. I did not like the hair going over the ears though. <laughs> no. It bothered me. <laughs> I mean, I didn't mind it because I I do that to my headband. So <laughs> I do like the scene that the grandmother does give her her, her tiara. Oh, that, was really mm-hmm. yeah. that was really sweet. And the grandmother did mention that like Clarissa had been eyeballing it forever. So when it comes to like after she's made her entrance, sorry, mom then shows up too to support her. So she oh, comes cute. down. What'd you say, <sighs> Olivia? Say that I again. That was really cute. It yeah. was. And her dress is so pretty. So pretty. Yeah. I adore Kelly Preston. Yeah, it's sad. And she was a late addition to this movie. She wasn't originally cast, I don't think. Yeah, the, they they said that they were, like, tr- trying to find someone maybe in England. They thought they would find someone in England, and it just didn't work out. And so they added her, and she was, like, a perfect addition to the cast. Which is funny, because, like, you see all those American scenes... And the people talking like with a New Jersey accent, those were all British people. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah. Wow. So um mom ends up oh grandma shows grandma was the one that called mom and had her fly out. Yeah. Glennis is none too happy and is like, well, we need to find an escort for her. And Daphne is like, Dad can just do it. Right. Duh. So they start dancing. Glennis is pissed. So she, like, yokes Daphne by the arm. But it's after she hears Daphne's dad admit that he's the one who got rid of Libby. And so when she starts asking about it, that's when she said, but let that bitch put her hands on me. Oh, the way. And there's no way you're putting your hands on me in the same room as my mother. I don't care if they're dancing. Mama! Oh, yeah, no, no. I would. (laughs) Yeah. You'd have to drag my mother off that woman. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and Glynis, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Glynis literally locks her in a room. Yeah, that. <laughs> and like, did she think that through? Like, did she think that Henry, once he found that out, was just going to be like, okay, that's cool? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Also, if my mother found me in a room. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oof you know like i don't understand why my mom's like yeah we're we're leaving like my mom mm -mm. i got i got business to take care of first you best you best square up let's (laughs) do it yeah catch your hands bitch (laughs) like get my vaseline out the purse real quick (laughs) taking off the earrings yeah (laughs) pulling the hair back (laughs) the hair's already (laughs) up we good to go and then you know i'll just be on the stepdaughter be like let's get it (laughs) (laughs) and and so the now it's the father daughter dance they can't find Daphne mom goes to look for her and Glennis is just like oh Clarissa will dance with you bitch this is Daphne's debutante like why do you think that's appropriate for Clarissa to dance with him and he just can't say no he all he had to do was say you know what Mm, hold on Love no, a boy. No. Chill the music. Yeah. yeah, honestly. I'll be right back. Yeah. Like, it was so easy for Henry to avoid this whole situation. Yeah. But when Daphne finally gets out and sees that, yo, my boy, that's worse than cheating, okay? Like, yeah. that's all she ever wanted in life was a father-daughter yeah. dance. It was rough. And so- then she played them mental sh- shit because she was like, here, Clarissa, take it. Gives her the tiara. Like, I don't want any of it. She just wanted a chance to, like, dance with her dad. She's over it. <laughs> that, um, that tiara would have gone home with me. I would have <laughs> knocked that bitch out. Yeah. And, Daddy, you're going to hear from my lawyers. I want my back pay and my child support. <laughs> yep. Okay? But, like, it would have been a wrap. And yeah. then the queen comes, which I don't understand this either, because like he didn't even try to like say, I'm so sorry, I fucked up, whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, what is the queen coming for now? Like for her. Like, time yeah. is gone. Like I don't get why. 
And and then he says, it like as if he's breaking up with someone, this is your child. He's like, yeah, I don't think it's working out. Bitch, what? <laughs> I, I, I was like, I, I almost lost it. <laughs> So then they go back home. They're back mm-hmm. in New York and they're back to the wedding singer gigs. You could see her trying to like sign up for college or whatever while she's waiting tables, whatnot. And here we go. Father, daughter dance again. And she's sad. And she's sad. But then Daddy Warbucks comes rolling in. Because he knew exactly where she was somehow. And, yeah. and crashes another person's wedding. I know. I would be pissed <laughs> as hell. <laughs> like, so you? now my we- wedding singer isn't singing. He's the girl that's supposed to. man. <laughs> <laughs> also, during a father daughter dance, it's only the father daughter. I've yes. never seen other people yeah. get the, like, bitch. I've seen if it's just like the shuffle dance that people typically do, like sp- spin slowly in a circle. I've seen after like, 30 45 seconds I say like Everyone other fathers them. and daughters you're right. welcome to the dance floor but not yeah. immediately and I... there's only like three people out there it's very obvious <laughs> that this waitress is dancing with this British boy I will say <laughs> that I got through most of this movie I was fine nostalgic but this scene made me hysterically cry because I remember watching this movie and just like really thinking I can't wait till I get married and I can have my father daughter dance with my dad and blah, blah, blah. Like you just mm-hmm. kind of imagine like, this is obviously what's going to happen. Yeah. Wasn't in the cards for me. One, a bitch still hasn't gotten married and two daddy did. So it was very triggering and sad for me. I cried a lot. Didn't yeah. mean to say it like that, but my dad has <laughs> a really good sense of humor. He would get it. He would have been <laughs> so it made me very very sad actually I didn't expect that to happen yeah so I was bawling crying afterward oh, yeah so it, essentially Harry Henry like and mom professed their love for one another and then Henry's like well I had to bring a groveling gift and then it's Ian so he just brought this British boy to America and so now they're all loving up on each other at someone else's wedding doesn't he like leave the um, he's does like what did he do like he yeah he withdrew his candidacy yeah Yeah. and then we oh and then at the very end of this scene they do a balloon release and it was so upsetting i have very hard opinions on balloon releases not good for the environment at all it's horrible for the environment please stop doing this yes (laughs) you're killing sea turtles and wildlife please stop like there's you know get some bubbles or some shit i don't know yeah bubbles are cuter like come on like yeah go in the bathtub and and put a little boat in there let it float (laughs) whatever you gotta do but stop doing this shit it is not like your your dead ancestors cannot see the like they're not they, reading the balloons in heaven. They're not. It's just killing the animals. Okay. Like we get it, but like, <laughs> yeah, enough is enough. <laughs> yeah. Right. So that was our PSA on do not do balloon releases, please. And thank you. And then we see the movie kind of wraps up. Alistair is now doing just the double decker bo- boat tours, bus tours, Glynis ends up marrying Peach and Pear's dad and he's telling her the chandelier story for the millionth time. Mom and dad go back to Morocco and get married and Daphne ends up being accepted to Oxford University. And so she gets to spend her, her college years with Ian in England. Now we know we know her daddy had to pull favors for that because oh, absolutely. there's no way she was in time for registration or application. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is no way. No way. And I I I don't I don't want to call her dumb. But I have a feeling the grades weren't there. Is it it, it just may it might be me, but I don't think the he grades. You probably were there. made a sizable donation. Yeah. Mm. And that's what a girl wants. What a girl wants. <laughs> What a girl needs. That that song did not play once 
in this it movie. didn't but you know it was named after the song yeah which is yeah. re- like it's right there why not pay for the song to be in it i don't understand it originally the title of this movie was supposed to be american girl i like that better they- Back at copyrights, right, for American Girl doll. Yeah, I think from an uh, SEO's perspective, they did a better job with yeah. what a girl wants. I don't see any noteworthy, like a bunch of notes that we missed, but I yeah. do want to call out that I know we got Oliver as the main love interest, but he actually beat out Henry Cavill. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, Kelly Preston and Oliver James did all of their own singing. Yes. In the movie, which I thought was pretty impressive. And the director of this movie actually directed New York Minute, which is very attracts. appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Especially for the sanitized Mary yeah. Kay and Ashley set. <laughs> and then Colin Firth being signed on is really what got Amanda Bynes to say, hell yeah, I'm going to do this movie as a smart girl should. Yeah. So, yeah. Really, really. Love this movie. Don't care what anybody says. Okay. So, uh, Olivia, why don't you tell everybody again where they can find you on social so that they can follow along on your adventures? Yeah. So you can follow my fashion, get ready with me, TikToks at Olivia Joan 18 and then my photography and regular daily life on instagram at underscore olivia underscore joan underscore a lot of underscores but <laughs> i promise you my instagram is pretty cool it's pretty cool <laughs> it, it definitely is you guys should go and check her out and if you didn't listen to our episode with her to get to know her we're almost done so wrap this up <laughs> And then go back and listen to that episode. And as always, you could check us out on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube at No More Late Fees. Let's get into our present day ratings. So now, as adults, rewatching this movie, where do we fall? We'll start with you, Olivia. I would do maybe just same day rental only for the nostalgia, but that's like once a year. <laughs> <laughs> if I just want to go down memory lane, but yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, <laughs> you're staying true. <laughs> it's a, it's a would buy it again, baby. Would buy it again. When it's on TV, I'ma watch it. <laughs> when it's streaming, I'ma watch it. When I get this DVD player working, I'ma watch it with commentary. Okay. <laughs> Ten toes down in that. (sighs) Jackie? Okay, well, technically, in order to watch this movie, I did buy it. (laughs) But given the choice, it would be a two-day rental. Wow. So, Danielle, if you need to watch it digitally, feel free to go on and watch my copy. (laughs) Oh, good. Yeah. Well, if you have hard opinions about what a girl wants, like Danielle does... (laughs) Give us a call at our quick drop, 909-601-6653, 909-601-NMLF. You can also twat us at the Twitters, leave a voicemail on our Anchor FM account, which is now Spotify for podcasts, <laughs> and you can be featured on a future episode. And join us next week as we celebrate Jackie's birthday a little late with the movie, The Wedding Date. I'm really excited about and- that. Early happy birthday, Jackie. Thank you. Yeah, Only a few really more happy. hours. <laughs> How exciting. Yay. <laughs> and as always, be kind and rewind. <laughs>